great town as well. Biggest regret. Man. Uh, I don't really have any regrets. Uh, I don't know. How do you get so sexy? Oh, man. Um, maybe it's all the tacos and burritos I've been eating. <laughs> I love your dances and outfits. Thank you, Brittany. Um, what is your favorite way to unwind? A glass of wine and petting my cats. Um, chicken hygienist. I'm sorry I don't understand the question, Edith. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what shampoo do you use? I love anything that has tea tree oil in it. Uh, I'm using Trader Joe's tea tree oil shampoo right now. I really like. What do you listen to when you're enjoying music for its own sake? Uh, right now, I am on a big cumbia kick. So whenever I have Pandora Station on, it's usually cumbia. If you could live and perform in any country, which would be your top pick? Iceland. Will you be teaching belly dance workshops this year? Yes, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, that's its own post, so I won't bore you with that here. But uh, find me on... Gosh, just type, in, type into your Google Zoe Jakes workshops and you should find them. That's for Matt and Amber. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, Lynn Shroom, where, how did you learn your dances? By practicing my ass off. Um, I practice a lot. And if I want to get good at stuff, I practice even more. But that's my day job, so I'm lucky. Susie Miner, who are you going to call? I'll call you, Susie. Put your phone number on the thing and I'll give you a call. <laughs> Ryan Michael, will you blow my mind again at Root Way or Festival this summer? I will try my best, Ryan. Jen Aguilar, do you start a piece of work with music selection, concept, costume, or is every piece different in process? I would say the last one. Sometimes a simple gesture can be the beginning of a piece of work for me. Sometimes a costume and sometimes a feeling that I'm trying to evoke, which can express itself in any of those. Alexis, when are you coming to visit my orchids? 19, you're crazy. I have two, and neither of them, no, I have three, and only one has flowers, and I'm sure all of yours are absolutely beautiful. For those of you guys who don't know Alexis Suthel, I pronounced the last name really poorly, but if you don't know her, she's a phenomenal dancer in Europe and quite an orchid collector. She can actually keep them alive and keep the flowers on, which is amazing. Cindy, do you and the guys from Beats Antique have any plans on coming to Brazil for a show? Not currently, but... I promise we will make our way down there at some point. Katie, if you could be any animal in the world for a day, what would you be and why? I would be a liger. Catherine, what is the thing that bolsters your creativity the most? Um, like I was saying before, it's the lack of expectation on creativity with um, any, no frame of a date that I have to uh, pr pr produce art at a certain time, like if I can just be free and relax with it, I tend to have a lot easier time being creative. Um, oh, Jen, Parma, what makes you feel nervous? Not feeling nervous. I've performed so much now that I feel like if I don't feel nervous, then something's wrong. And so now getting a little bit of nervous is actually kind of exciting. Corey Ludwig, what does the fox say? I believe it's... <laughs> Lisa, what is your favorite animal? Uh, well, cat or a liger or maybe a unicorn with wings, like a pegacorn or a dinocorn, a dinosaur with wings. That'd be kind of cool. Alan Mendez, when are you going to tour in South America? Soon, I promise. Jenny, what makes your heart race with excitement? What makes you cry? Well, like a good cry or a bad cry? A good cry is like videos of animals being treated well. Bad cry is being forced to ride a roller coaster, maybe. And then heart race with excitement. Um, an evening at home working on costuming or choreography. But you probably figured that one out. Tiffany, Eileen, my Hendrix, who is your hero in life and dance? My mother. My dad. I have a great family. My brother's incredible. He's actually an MMA fighter. Don't tell my mom. Well, she knows, but um, he's a really phenomenal guy too. My sister's incredible. I just have a pretty badass family, so that's what I would say. Let's see. Favorite guilty pleasure, like I was saying before, sleeping in is kind of the best thing ever, and I feel totally guilty 
the entire time. Have you got any pets? Yes, I have two cats. They are the best. I should have paper cutouts because I feel like people are going to ask this a lot and I could have like, meow, meow. or maybe I'll do my next one at home and I can introduce you guys to my cats. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Um, I would light my fart on fire for a Klondike bar. Evan Cross. Uh, Heather Radchell. I apologize for the poor pronunciation. Who are some of your favorite bands or musicians to listen to and dance to? Odessa's blowing my mind right now. Um, I love Massive Attack was something that really changed my life and was a huge influence, Beats Antique as well. I would also say uh, Bjork is uh, mind-blowing. And of course, David Bowie, may he rest in ridiculously, fabulously well-dressed piece. Um, Shan Beam, how do you do your awesome eye makeup? Um, well... I actually went to like a matte counter years and years and years ago and had them show me how to do, um, to do, what's it called? Uh, to mix, what do you call it? mixing with shadow? Uh, blending, that's what it is. Blending, ding, 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 ding. Uh, blending is really the secret behind awesome eye makeup. I would go somewhere that someone can teach you how to blend your shadows. Um, uh, Beetlejuice, Danielle, uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, <laughs> it did not appear, but maybe next time. Chrissy Salyer. Costume ideas. Uh, where do I get my costume ideas? Um, all over. And I generally tend to just have something that feels like it pops out of nowhere, and then I realize it's in like a some kind of like creative folder I have on my web, on my uh, desktop, on my computer, and I go, oh, I didn't think of that. Nothing is original. Yagami Kyoto, I apologize for brutally chopping your name up. By the way, your hair, a wig, new cuts and color. My hair, my hair, my hair. This is my hair, it's pink right now. This side looks great and this side looks awful. I need to dye it, but um, yeah, it's my hair. I just kind of bleached out a chunk. It's actually less than you think, so it's just this one little thing that covers the rest. When will you return to Portland, Patrick wants to know. Um, I think I'm gonna be up there in the next couple months. Alex Garcia, if you could be any mythological character, who would you want to be? Mythological like Pandora's box kind of mythological? I mean, I'd probably pick a mythological animal. So there we go, I'd be a pegacorn again. Alex probably didn't what didn't probably wasn't what you meant, but pegacorn. Katie Kimler, how did you and the guys first meet each other? Uh, David and I met at our friends party and Tommy and I were in a band called Extra Action Marching Band and then we were in a group called the Yard Dogs Roadshow. We've been performing together forever. And uh, let's see, Mimi Ziegler, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh, sorry. Try that again. This photo was inspired by the movie Beetlejuice. Yes, it was. <laughs> Good. Nice. Nice one. Danielle. Dutra. Oh, that's what you were saying. Hannah, what song is inspiring you to dance right now? Your goddess. Um, thanks, Hannah. Mm, what's her name? What's her name? Oh, God. Hair lady. Totally amazing. Beyonce. Okay, she did a song, Crazy in Love, and she did it with this really cute kind of 20s vibe. I'm actually working on a choreography for my company right now, and I absolutely love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Katie, serious inspiration to me. Watching you dance is amazing. Oh, thanks, Katie. You're so sweet. Rin, what is something you do to relax during or after a long tour? Um, let my brain kind of melt for a while by engaging in all sorts of things that are not supposed to be good for you. Like, probably sleeping a lot and not thinking about art for a while. I don't, I tend to not like to force myself into the creative process. So that means um, a downtime here and there. And I, I feel like I'm, it's like two days and I'll be like, I'm finished as an artist. And then I realize that there comes an idea right there. Like I um, just need a second to like let it happen. So the question being, what do you do to relax? It's to disengage from my art as much as possible for at least a few days. Simone. How do you manage performing what you love professionally and touring without losing your love for it? Um, you treat it like a relationship. 
and just like a relationship that you have with a man or a woman, um, you have times, periods of time where it feels awful and it feels like work and you don't enjoy it, but you love it even if you don't like it. So there are periods of time where I don't like what I do. Still love it, but it doesn't feel like that in the moment. And those are the times where discipline gets you through. That's where you show up on time for your job that maybe you're not enjoying the most at that moment. You act professional. You treat it with respect, just like you would a relationship. And then, um, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I'm still in love with it, and I'm enjoying it a lot right now. So um, it's just that commitment, you know, even when it's not the funnest thing in the world. Um, and then over the years, you start to see that more often than not, it's love versus being a job or being something that's miserable. And you see those percentages and you recognize that you are, in fact, still very lucky, even if you don't love your job all the time. What, Taylor, what is, when is BTNT going to come out in full official public support of Bernie Sanders? Man, we need to push them even more, don't we? Um, Bernie uh, is definitely our man. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that suggestion, Taylor. We will, in fact. This is, this is it. This is the first full official public support of Bernie Sanders. Me and David actually went to the Bernie Sanders um, rally, or um, we had, there was a big march in uh, Oakland, and it rained, but there were still a couple thousand people there, and we were there. Yeah, all about Bernie. Uh, feel the burn, is that his logo, or unofficial or official? But feel the burn -y. Okay, Sophia, if you could be anyone from history, who would you be and why? God, that is the hardest question. Oh, man. Um, I feel like um, the only thing that kind of weirds me out about being someone like Anne Boleyn, well, she got her head cut off, so I guess, maybe not Anne Boleyn, but, you know, from that period, like the 1500s, a tutor, being a tutor was not the safest thing. Uh, is, you know, the chance of dying from, like, childbirth or pestilence or something. I guess I'm a, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm a little too practical for these kind of questions because instead of thinking, like, oh, it'd be so romantic to be, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, but then, you know, you'd probably teeth would fall out when you're 40 and you wouldn't have the, you know, wouldn't feel so good because there's no, like, health care. So, anyway, um, I'd probably pick someone a little closer to my time. Um, someone from, like, the 30s would be amazing. Hey, do you want to work oh, hey, wait, wait. David, say hi. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to our fans. What? How's it going? Oh, my God. They're inside that? Okay, David's going to answer a question. David, you ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll read it to you. What? What inspired you to belly dance, and how did you get involved oh, in can, Burning Man? I can talk about that. How did the burn change you, and what do you normally... Who do you normally camp with? Um, well, I started belly dancing when I was... Oh, man, I think seven years old. Seven years old. Okay. How did you get involved with Burning Man? Um, but now answer it as David, not Zoe. Well, I thought Burning Man was actually an activity, and I set myself on fire in my backyard and invited... No way. No, for real. Invited my friends over, and Come they... Come on. Okay, I'll tell you how they, David... And they called the hospital, and, they, and then I was... Okay. Okay, fine. That's how... <laughs> That's how you went to discover Burning Man. But then I realized it was a festival, and I went to the festival. Who do you normally camp with? Uh, I started camping with the Burning Man Opera back in 1999. Ooh, wow, they're you're old. They're talking to their fans. Hey, fans. Hi, fans. Okay, or people. so they're now people. Tommy's going to answer the next question. Tommy, what's your favorite toy as a kid? Uh, my favorite toy as a kid was this um, little pink motorcycle. It was actually red, but it it's actually right it here. Stayed outside. Yeah, show, show it to him. It stayed outside in the rain for so long that it turned pink. And then, like, so I was riding my favorite pink motorcycle with my friend, and I got scared. Wait, and, is this a real story? Yes. This is really sweet. And I, it, it was really crazy. He pulled off to the side, and I flipped over the whole thing and landed on my collarbone and broke it. Oh. And I got really mad at my friend. Ow. And I just wanted to tell you, Mike, I'm sorry I got mad at you back then, but... <laughs> oh, God, this is a confession. It was my favorite toy that hurt me. Mm, sad. Damn. <laughs> okay, well, I'll finish the other half up in a little bit, but uh, there you go. 
podcast, podcast number one. Woo! Woo! Ow. 